Hey everyone, I'm Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching my video. If you can take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. And again, thanks a lot for stopping by. What do I want to talk about? I want to talk about when I first came into recovery and sort of got the recovery game, you know, got some traction. The first time I came in though, I was 22 years old. And I had that scenario that a lot of young people get in. You know, I lived that same scenario. I looked around and everybody was a gray top or many, many years older than me. And I said to myself, I don't belong here. I'm too young to be an alcoholic. I'm too young to be a drug addict. I'm out of here. And I left. I lasted about 30 days the first time. The second time I came in, what's the expression I want to use? Put the cart before the horse. I did everything that everybody in 12-step programs was telling me not to do. I said, I'll prove you wrong. I'll do the total opposite and I'll do what the hell I want. And I did what the hell I want. And I ended up drinking again and going out again for many, for about three years. And when I say did what I want, I mean, I went out with, uh, I got involved in a relationship. Oh yeah, nice relationship. I even got her pregnant and we had a small child at that time. And I couldn't even run my own life at 28 years old. So that was the kind of decisions I was making. Huge, huge decisions in my life and I couldn't even run my own life. When I finally got some traction or, or got involved in 12-step programs, I was 31 years old. 31 years old. A lot of people come in to 12-step programs at 31 years old. A lot of people are coming in much younger nowadays, and that is just great. Because if you can get a handle on your addiction at a younger age, that is terrific. But I was 31 years old. And one of the, some of the things I was feeling at 31 years old in recovery, the first thing was when I started my journey was I felt like a complete loser. I looked around and I was comparing myself to all my buddies and all my peers. You know, they had houses, they had great relationships, they were well-educated, they had children, all this kind of stuff. They had it together. And people much younger than me had it together. And I was very, very jealous of this when I was in my 30s because I never planned to be an alcoholic. I wanted to be a businessman. I wanted to be successful at life. And alcohol had different plans for me. It kicked the legs right out from underneath me all the time. Every time I built up my life in the restaurant business or had a great relationship going on or, or bought a car, whatever it may be, I lost everything. I remember getting my car repulled from my apartment, going down to work one day, and my car wasn't there. They repulled the damn thing. You know, I just on and on, alcohol had different plans for me. So when I sobered up at 31 years old, I was pretty mixed up. I was destitute basically. I didn't have any place to live. I was, you know, bumming food at the mission down here in Ottawa. I was looking for some place to live. The YMCA took me in. They gave me a room. I had my own room, my own bed, my own TV, that kind of thing. So I was really grateful at that time. But let me tell you something. At that age, I had nothing going for me. I really didn't. I envied a lot of people. I had a lot of anger. I had a lot of issues of just issues and issues going on. But it doesn't really matter why you come into recovery. It really doesn't. And it doesn't matter what age it is that you come in. The main thing is, is that you're there. That you're there. That you're trying to better yourself. Being an alcoholic and having a disease of alcoholism is not your fault. It's a disease. It's something we get. We drink ourselves in to the dependency of alcohol, that we use alcohol to, to run our lives, to control our emotions, to control the way we think. You know, everything. Alcohol will go into every nook and cranny of your life. And by this time, I've drank since 13 years old. And like I said, my last drink when I was 31. I knew when I was 18 years old that I had a drinking problem. My life was totally out of control. I was afraid of my anger. When I say anger, I want to say rage because I had rage. Anger would have been nice, but my, my emotions were so intense and I had so much hate against the world and my parents and my dad and the way I was brought up, it was rage. I thought the world owed me. So what did I do? What did I do with all this anger and all this life that I want to have? What did I do? Well, I like to say that when I went in recovery, everything worked out. I like to say that, but it didn't. I went through another divorce. I lost my house again. I lost a lot of stuff in recovery. The one thing I didn't lose, I didn't lose my recovery. I didn't lose my journey. I was still sober through everything. Being sober 
uh, doesn't promise us anything. It doesn't promise us a good education or healthy children or, or a great life or a nice house or a nice car or a beautiful wife. It doesn't guarantee that. What it simply guarantees is that we will have the ability to stay silver no matter what happens to us in life. We will be granted the tools and we'll understand that drinking is just not an option for us no matter what. So when I was 31, I got, I, I, you know, the first year of recovery was a lot of fun. It was all new. And, but I immersed myself into 12 step programs. I went to counseling. I went back to school a little bit because my reading and writing to this day really sucks. And I started to better myself slowly. But I did one thing that I did, didn't do last times when I was in recovery programs. I put my sobriety first. And I still do that to this day. Putting my recovery first. What is number one in my life? Number one in my life is not to drink again. Stay in recovery. That is number one. Everything else can lose. I can lose it in my life, but I do not want to drink because if I drink, everything becomes very hopeless. And let me tell you something. I'll become a train wreck very, very soon. I don't have no reason to believe I'll become a train wreck, but I look around and see my guys, my friends around me who have went back out after many years, some of them have died, some of them have ended up in jail, some of them I've never hear about anymore, lost everything. And you know, it's a disaster. So if you're thinking about going out and drinking, I wouldn't do that. So getting sober and going out, you can rebuild your life. You really, really can. Take it one day at a time. Find somebody who you can talk to, find somebody to guide you. If you're going through hard times, they will work out. I, like I said, I was going through divorce court when I first came into program. I had criminal charges against me. I had a lot of things going against me when I got sober. And being sober with a lot of pressure, external pressure on you is very, very difficult, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. We need to realize that. Being sober or getting recovery is hard. It's difficult. And it'll suck sometimes. It'll suck the life out of you. You'll think, what the hell am I doing this for? Why am I feeling so lousy? I thought sobriety was supposed to be great. But it is great. But we have to go through those spurts. A lot of that stuff that you're suffering from is wreckage from the past. Past behaviors of your drinking and your alcoholism that you need to clean up. It's old emotions, things you've never dealt with. It's fear, it's hurt, it's pain, it's fear of the future, all those sort of things. But it will get better because you know why? You will get better. You will get better. If you have the same determination that I have or had or have, <laughs> whatever, to get sober, your life will be great. Your life will be great. What's it like today for me? Well, it's like this. I have a cottage, I have a house, I have a loving wife, I have a lot of things in my life that I never thought I had before. I have great friends, I, I have good health, I have the ability to do these videos on a regular basis. There's a lot of things I have going for me, but the main thing that I have going for me is that I am silver. That is the main thing, okay? You put your sobriety first before anything, before your children, before your wife, before your job, before your bank account, before going to the gym, before going out to a party, whatever it is, you will get where you're going. And all those other things around you that you wanted will come to you naturally. You will not have to force them whatsoever. Believe it or not, okay? Believe it or not. Being silver is a great life. It's not an easy life at the beginning, but there is a reward, and the reward is serenity, peace, and harmony with yourself and the world around you in the ability to handle life one day at a time. What else can you ask for? After that, the world is yours, believe it or not, okay? Believe it or not. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we're learning to live sober one day at a time. If you like my video, leave a comment below. If you think my video sucks, leave a comment below. But can you all do me one favor? Can you please 
subscribe to my channel, okay? Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next week. God bless. Stay safe. Stay silver. And I'll see you next time. I'm checking out. It's Mother's Day here in Ottawa, Canada. Happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful women. And thank you for looking after your kids and making great, great sons and daughters. Okay? Thanks a lot. And see you later. Bye-bye.